I want to see absorption lines. Now what exactly are absorption lines? Say you have a given spectrum of light that's being emitted from some sort of hot object like a star, and you have different substances like sodium, magnesium, or calcium floating around in that light. When certain colors of light, certain wavelengths, strike each of those substances, what will happen is due to the quantum nature of the electrons around those substances, the light will be absorbed temporarily and re-scattered, creating a slightly darker spot if you're looking at a pinpoint of light. Now these dark spots are used in almost every astronomical observation we make. It is extremely difficult to find any astronomy that doesn't involve absorption spectra in some capacity. Whether it is just looking for the particular emission lines to tell what kind of molecules and atoms are in that object, say for exoplanets, or whether you're measuring the Doppler shift of the light stretching and squashing in relation to how it's been moving. Now one of the things that isn't always made clear when we're talking about a red shift or a blue shift is that the whole spectrum is actually stretching and squashing due to the way that the source was moving when it emitted the light. There's other ways of red shifting due to gravitational or cosmological red shifting. Now it's relatively easy to convince yourself of the other part of this system where the particular elements emit at certain wavelengths when they become heated up. Many of you have probably seen those toy glasses that you put on and it creates little rainbow patterns out from all of the different light sources. And what's actually in that little piece of plastic over your eyes is a diffraction grating that separates out the light into its various colors. And if you look carefully at certain lights, usually fluorescent lights or say a sodium vapor lamp, you'll see that instead of having a continuous spectrum, you have individual peaks and troughs of light. But if you've never seen this before, there's a simple way that you can make a spectrograph to observe emission spectra coming from light sources and a very similar design that will actually let you see absorption lines. You're going to need to start by making a slit in some sort of card. Now sometimes you'll see instructions that tell you to use a razor. What I'm actually going to use is the same method that I used on my uh, double slit video. You can see right here. I put a little piece of rounded graphite for a, lead, for a pencil refill on the edge of the slit, and this causes the slit to be rounded so you get less edge diffraction. Two pieces of graphite, lay them on here. Boop. There. Then, once you have that, you're going to want to get a tube, like a paper towel tube, and put it on to the end. Now I'm using opaque tape so that light doesn't creep in around the edges because you want to make sure that the only light that comes through is through that slit, like so. And on the other side, you're going to need to get a diffraction grating. For our diffraction grating, we're gonna use a CD. I have plenty of these laying around from back when we used to store stuff on CDs. The way that the data was encoded on here meant that there are lots and lots of tiny bumps and ridges, pits and lands, in the CD itself. And you can already see the bright rainbow colors come from the pits and lands. But we want to be able to look through it. What you'll do is you'll take some duct tape, put it onto the matte side, not the side not the bottom side where you would originally put the information, but on the other side. Press it on there very firmly. Oh, <laughs> skip a step. So on the side that has sort of the silver stuff on it, score through that silver layer with an X-Acto blade, and then take some duct tape and press it on there really good. You should be able to peel off most of that Backing. Keep doing this until you have a reasonably large section where there's no uh, silvering on it anymore. Then you're going to want to take this section and cut it out. And this will be what we look through. Oh, there it is. Uh, I can see the spectra from my uh, light. So we'll put it on the other side, and it's important 
the pits and lands run just like an old record would along the curve and we want to make sure that this direction lines up with the direction of our slit. You might need to trim off a couple of the corners and then go ahead and tape it on there. Again, the game is blocking out excess light. Now here is your spectrum analyzer. And a good test is to use a CFL or fluorescent light. Then what we do is go ahead and look at it really close and then off to the side you'll be able to see, there it is, multiple different colors of light at particular spots. It's not a continuous stream of light. There's, there's different holes in it. There's all sorts of different hues and colors and it's important to be kind of looking off to the to the side there. With this I was able to get some emission spectra and verify that that piece of the evidence is true. However, I still wasn't able with this tool to get enough detail and resolution to see absorption spectra. So for that I'm going to use the bigger tube and some other little tricks. Oh, I like that. In order to make sure that the interior of this tube uh, doesn't cause any extra reflections or scattering of light, I'm going to line it with some fabric. I have my piece of fabric cut out and I'm wrapping it around the tube. So I'm going to do kind of this in sections. Now I'm gluing the fabric to the fabric, not to the exterior, because I'm going to slide this off like a big old sock to put down the interior of the tube. And this is all, all of these little tricks are just to minimize the amount of light that is scattering around on the inside of the tube. And obviously I'm doing the uh, softer velvety side toward the inside side here. Great. Then we're gonna go ahead and then put it down the middle of the tube. Now I can go ahead and fold this open. Just don't want to be able to see through it. That's not bad. So you can still see through it, but a lot of those edges are, are now blocked off to minimize the amount of light scattering in there. The seam side is a little bit bulky. Cut off some of this excess. Ah, ah. Ow. That's the burning of my fingers. You know, be careful, hot glue, ow. Step two is going to be to still use that, but this is white. We don't want white. We want to keep everything dark so that we're not having any sort of weird reflections. And we're going to do the bottom one as well. Now, I need to use DVD because uh, it has more narrow pits and lands than the CD, so hopefully I'll be able to have a better diffraction, more, more spreading out of the light. Oh, dang it. Well, apparently these are two layer DVDs because I peeled off some of it and it doesn't work. So I guess we'll be using the CD again. Should still work. Need to make a hole in one of these caps so that I can go ahead and replace it and look through it. I probably want to make this whole top section black too just so that there's no reflections around from my eyes. I still need to cut a little viewing window. And then again, we're going to put CD over the hole. And then we put this on the top. We have a very long, very dark tube with a lot of space and opening on this end. So this one, we're going to cut another small viewing window, but we won't look directly at anything because you don't want to look directly at the sun anyway. What we will be doing is making a reflector off of chrome plated screwdriver like that to get a nice straight thin line. Okay, now this will go in the bottom. Now to take it outside. 
So initially I set up in my backyard and try as I might, I was unable to get my video camera to show any emission lines. I did, after quite a lot of trial and error, get it to show a little bit of the spectrum, but despite these efforts, I found that it was just too much variation with respect to also being able to record it as video. In particular, the absorption spectra was so very dim that I had to overexpose the shot, which caused all sorts of other issues. Partway through this arrangement, I decided that instead of having the cloth that I had originally put down the inside of the tube folded back, that it would help if I blocked out some of the light by ungluing it and pulling it up over the camera. And this did improve things somewhat, but I still couldn't get a clear enough image to see whether I had absorption lines showing up or not. After I moved inside, I decided that just to up the odds of, of me getting a clear image, I went ahead and used the slit that I had made for my handheld spectrograph and attached it to the bottom of my larger version. I was still using the screwdriver as a reflector so that A, I didn't mess up my eyes by looking directly at the sun, and B, to further narrow the light that was coming through the slit. After a bit of fiddling around and using my handheld digital camera and taking a very long exposure, I was able to get a sufficiently clear spectrum to see whether or not there were absorption lines. And indeed, there were. So I have a couple of my photographs that I took pulled into Photoshop here. And while I did do just some very slight image modification to them, you can still make out what we're looking at here, pointing out that we have a sodium line, a magnesium line, and then one, two, three, four calcium lines up in the blue. This one's even easier to see where we have, again, the magnesium line, the sodium line shows up a bit better here. And then we have this blue, uh, which is actually where iron, helium, and calcium all kind of show up right here. Closer to this almost purpley end, we have the other three calcium lines. But I mean, this one definitely shows up. This one definitely shows up in both cases. But I was finally able to see the absorption spectrum for our own star. I really appreciate the final result of this experiment because I was able to definitely pick out absorption lines. And since so much astronomy depends on understanding absorption spectra and the Doppler shift that goes along with it, it's much easier for me to appreciate and grasp all that astronomy has to teach us. But you don't have to take my word for it because you can science it.